Uh, I think some of the attendance times that we've been speaking about here, and the Commissioner mentioned earlier on about the, uh, the fire in that little house earlier on, that we had fire engine firefighters there within four minutes to that. It's not what you, it's not how, how quickly you can get people there, it's what you do when you get them there. And I think what has been taken into account here is with all these station closures, you're losing a lot of local knowledge. You can get fire appliances turning up from across station, stations, grounds, they haven't got the local knowledge. So they don't know that some of these flats have got um, mezzanines, they don't know that some of them are masonettes, they don't know the layout of them, so what are they going to do when they get there? That increases the attendance time to the actual flat that's on the 15th floor. Thank you. Thank you. Just to your left. No, you know what I mean? You said no. Um, the guy at the back there with the black t-shirt on the Kelly hat. Thank you. I mean, <clears throat> to be honest, James, you know, you're talking about, oh, well, you know, hard choices and everything else. You know, it's the same old adage from the Tories, really, you know, it's really terrible, crocodile tears and all that, and, you know, that we're making cutbacks to working class areas. You know, as we well know that, you know, if it was down to uh, cutting services in more wealthier areas, it wouldn't be on. And, I mean, it's quite funny, really, James, when you talk about, you know, if we just take the cuts here, then it's okay, because next time when it's around the cuts, we won't have to deal with it. The fact of the matter is, it's quite simple. If we fight now, then we will make sure that we push back these cuts. If we fight now, even if they push through the cuts, that is the way to stop the cuts. At the end of the day, that's what's going to happen. You know, they can cut NHS, they can cut their fire service, they can cut, you know, everything else, benefits, etc., etc. When people kick up a fuss, when people fight back, do you know what, when it comes to the next round of cuts, that's the people that they don't cut because they know that they can't deal with those people. Since the students kicked off and set fire to things, believe me, there hasn't been a raising tuition fee since 2010. And that's, that's basically what we've got to do, people. We've got to get together, we've got to organise, and we've got to fight against these cuts because it's the fit end of the wedge. Don't think that because we take a lot of cuts this time, we're going to get away with it. It's not going to happen. If you have campaign, like they did in Lewisham and other places, that is the way to get around these cuts. And at the end of the day, there's also something about Bow that you never mentioned. Is it's on the border of Newham as well, which, you know, if you want to factor in their building, actually, there's all that building behind where the uh, Olympics is and all that. Is that actually factored into when you're talking about the increase? I mean, such an increase that that's now affecting um, place, child places in schools in Tower Hamlet. So clearly, there is crossover there as well. But like I say, you know, it's disingenuous this meeting. You came here without the figures, you knew exactly what they were, you knew how terrible they would sound, so you massage the figures a bit, make it sound like averages and all this sort of stuff. And it's, it's nonsense. You can't have the average of how long a fire engine takes to go down the Whitechapel Road at midnight or 2 a.m. in the morning, and then average it out of what it would be like at 9 o'clock in the morning on a, on a Wednesday. It's complete nonsense. That average figure means is meaningless. It's a meaningless figure that means absolutely nothing. You came here with that attitude, you're going to massage the figures, and people know you're disingenuous. At the end of the day, people, if we're going to stop these cuts, then we need a campaign. They can waffle, but let's cut to the chase here. Commissioner, is it Dennis? Dennis's point about you'll, you'll lose local knowledge. I don't know if you'd like to come back. Well, okay, Dennis. I mean, if what you're arguing now then is that but the, the consequence of that is that actually all the local knowledge we've got on stations grounds at the moment will be lost. I don't agree with that because actually what we will do is because those stations get closed, their, their station grounds will become responsible for other stations. The firefighters from those stations will pick up that local knowledge. Sorry? Yeah, exactly, yeah, which is why if you talk about the, the, the utilisation rate, we spoke about earlier, about 7%. Some stations in London are less, less. Let me finish. Let, let me finish. Some stations in London are sending less than two calls a day at the moment, so actually I don't accept that there isn't the time to actually pick up that additional workload. And actually, when you talk about Lackanall House, for example, um, like, as I said earlier, Lackanall House wasn't about getting fire engines quicker there, wasn't that the firefighters didn't have local knowledge of that, of that building, that's because that building hadn't been maintained yet and looked after properly. And that would be easy. Yeah, well, that's what the college report said. No, it's not. It doesn't put blame on the fire brigade, actually. Not, not from an operational response. It might mention things around and fire safety survival guidance calls and control and things like that, like we talk about tonight. But it doesn't criticise the firefighters in terms of their response. And if, it, if you think it did, you need to read it again. <laughs> okay, thank you, Commissioner. And then, I don't know, um, yeah. Chairman, if you'd like to come in about the gentleman at the back's comment about we, we're just, we're being disingenuous, we're massaging the figures. Um, 
No, the reason, the reason we're talking about borrower averages is because the, uh, the attendance time standards that we've set are, are borrower-wide first and second um, average attendance time. So the, the, the metric that we uh, measure ourselves against, which is predated this foreign authority, has been in place for quite some time. So the fees we generate are so we can compare those figures against the, uh, against the um, uh, standards that we, that we set. So that's the reason why we do borrower-wide averages. I completely, completely disagree with the idea that we are, you know, targeting the poor areas of London. Um, I don't think, you know, I, I, that doesn't bear up to even the most cursory screws and jewelry. Um, well, you know, the proposals, if you look through, I mean, you can bring the list back up again. Uh, Chelsea, Kensington, Chelsea, Kensington, uh, uh, Bell Park, I mean, these, uh, no, they're, they're not in my decision. So. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> but as I say, the idea, the idea that, that, that these are targeting just uh, poor areas of London, just as I say, does not stack up. It's not about the The point you make about uh, our response, again, you know, I'm not necessarily, you know, I'm clearly I'm going to agree uh, with, the, with the, uh, um, uh, the tactics you put forward. Um, as I say, we put, yeah, we put, we put a very, uh, we put a very uh, professional case to government. Uh, there are other fire authorities who took a bit more of a kind of digging their heels in position, and we got a better funding supplement than they did. So I think, you know, that that, you know, that, that vindicates the position we took. I'm not going to pretend this is good news. You know, we had a sizable budget cut, um, and you know, if I if I were able to create a situation where we didn't have a budget cut. That's what we want to do. But the fact is, we have got one, we've got to deal with that. When you say good news, it's not good news, the Chief has just said that we're going to improve the service with cuts. Mm -hmm. But you've just said it's not good news. Mm -hmm. No, I think what the Commissioner said. No, the Commissioner just said, when he answered the, uh, the other person's question, that you would improve the service with cuts. That we were going to have a, an improved service. He did just say that. I don't think he did. He did. He did. He did. He did. He did. He did just say that. <laughs> You've been saying it all night. More lies. <laughs> um, the sim you know, the, the, I mean, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but, uh, you know, I've, um, you know, from my memory of what was said, and I know we've been videos, we can be... I'm going to rewind it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the point you made was that, you know, he has got to work within the budget that he's given, and that within the budget he is going to put forward a proposal, we are putting forward a proposal which protects Londoners, but within the budget. Um, the simple fact of the matter is, in his presentation, he said we, you know, we can't make this size of budget reduction and there be no impact. And we've discussed at quite a bit of length the impact that that's going to have on attendance times both London-wide and locally. So none of us are sitting here and saying that this budget cut is going to have no effect or is going to have you know, a positive effect, what we're saying is that it's going to have an effect, that effect is going to uh, mean that we have uh, increased uh, attendance times on average. Um, those increased attendance times uh, will vary uh, across geography. Um, but, but they will are, be detrimental. It's been on the slides, I mean the, the figures there, at no point have we ever tried to pretend that you can take any So answer the question, is this a bad thing for London, closing these stations?
Oh, trash, yeah. is about what priorities we use, where we work to, uh, there are a whole load of things. It's not a yes, no question. Um, and so, um, so we, we do absolutely want you to look into this uh, in, in, in detail. If there are things that we are doing, even if you don't like the station proposals, if there are other elements that you think are positive, let us know about that, but also let us know about your views on the, on the, on the station proposals. Um, and ultimately, we will take all those decisions, sorry, we'll take all those responses and we'll make a decision. I'm not going to say to you that this is about trying to find out whether closing fire stations is popular or unpopular. We don't need a consultation to know that closing fire stations is unpopular. No, the point I'm saying is that for me, whatever plan we come up with has got to fit within the priorities and our, 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 uh, um, uh, and our budget. Um, and, 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 that, and that is not a situation that I can make go away. Um, so I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm not going to you know, sit here and say to you that if lots of people say we don't like station closures, that the station closures will go away because we've got to make, we've got to make the proposal for the budget. Sorry, can you just listen to our social response, please? I, I just wanted to sort of um, make sure that you picked up on John Biggs's point, which was we go away and we consider the whether or not it's appropriate to close bow and cut the um, fire engine from Whitechapel. I also wonder, because obviously this is a listening exercise, so we need to go away and take into account what people said. I wonder if there's anybody here who actually supported the proposal to, to cut, because I'm not hearing that that's the case. I'm hearing that everybody thinks this is a bad proposal, bad for the area, and bad fundamentally. So, But if there's anybody here who thinks it's a good idea, it would be really helpful to know for us to go away and think about that as well. Okay, well maybe I can cover that in, in a wrap up. Um, we, we've run over quite considerably. There's obviously a lot of passion and concern in the room. But one concern is that people stand up and articulate their fears but then forget to do the consultation. Uh, and I really reiterate to you all, either take one of the documents here or go online. I've done mine. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes. You do your consultation.
they have computers, they are computer literate. And none of these, all these are in English. If you go on the website, everything's in English. So how are them residents catered for to, to put their views across? My understanding is we do have the literature in loads of lots of different languages. Carol, I don't know if we can... If you go on the website homepage, there's one part on it that says, if you would like this in a different format, please send an email. But that's in English. We've noted that point. Thank you, sir. Um, but ju just to wrap up, just to reiterate, obviously there's been a lot of passion and concern in the room. My fear is that you don't record it, and it's part of that consultation exercise that you need to record your concerns either within the forms you have in front of you or online. I would just like to thank you all for coming along and contributing, um, and just to say that the information from this consultation will be considered by the London Fire and Emergency Planning Authority later this year, probably at a July meeting. Okay, so thank you for coming along and safe journeys home. Thank you.